Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I just want to do a quick energy update for you just to talk through kind of what is happening in the chart today because it is quite a powerful one in terms of the astrology. Um, so we have a conjunction with Jupiter and Mars in Gemini. So, you know, if you are feeling quite scattered, if you're not entirely sure which way is up and which way is down, if you're feeling like, you know, the stories are changing from minute to minute and you don't quite know what's going on, um, then you are absolutely in tune with the energy of today. Now, Jupiter and Mars only meet up every two years and and what we have is the god of war, Mars, but who is also very much about action and motivation and drive and passion, meeting up with the great expander, um, you know, the great benefic, Jupiter. So Jupiter is very much about um, growth, about opportunity, about pushing our limits, stretching um, the, the boundaries as far as they can go, adventure excitement, abundance, luck, you know. So whenever Mars meets an, another aspect or angle or planet in the chart, Mars is kind of like um, the touch paper, if you like, and the, the ignition, the accelerator um, sort of gets things moving even more quickly than perhaps they have been. And whenever Jupiter meets another planet or angle, Jupiter is going to expand the inf influence of that planet or angle. So these two coming together, as you can probably see, is a big deal. And when we are working with Gemini energy, Gemini is mutable air. So everything is at full speed already. But Mars coming in is going to make it go even bigger, even crazier, even louder, even faster. And Gemini, you know, I've talked about Gemini quite a lot with Jupiter's um, transit through this sign. This is very much about the mind. It's about thinking. It's about our consciousness. It's about information coming through, um, ideas, stories, gossip. Um, Gemini can be quite divisive because often, you know, we are required to make a decision, to choose, to take sides. So again, you know, it can be quite dualistic. There's, you know, there's two choices, the two options. And there is also, you know, a real sense of um, energy being quite scattered, quite hard to pin down. You know, obviously air cannot be contained and can move really quickly. And so, you know, this is about having mental agility and sort of being fleet of foot. Um, you know, the details are coming through, lots of facts. Um, lots of opinions, lots of noise, all of that is possible today with this conjunction. And, you know, so if you are feeling like, you know, the landscape is changing from minute to minute, then, you know, the reality is, <laughs> it probably is. And it is a case of how can we learn to navigate that without getting sucked into the drama, without it stressing us out, um, without sort of feeling overwhelmed. Because obviously with strong air energy, you know, it is, um, you know, the winds of change are blowing. There is no doubt about that. But it's about how can we navigate that without getting whipped up into the storm? Where How can we hold our centre? You know, I often read about sort of the eye of the storm and standing right in that middle where there is silence, where there is stillness. And again, it's about how can we sort of reach that point where we're not so affected by what is going on? Because, you know, there is a lot of other things going on in this chart um, linked to this conjunction. So I just want to sort of break those down quickly as well. So, you know, Jupiter wants to expand, wants us to grow, wants to bring in opportunities. This is very much about soul growth. This is about adventure. So, you know, if you've got something that you have been wanting to get going, you know, today is a great day for, um, you know, Mars to come along and sort of go, right, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Hit that go button, ready, steady, go. Um, you know, it's all hands on decks, all systems active. Um, so, you know, great opportunity, especially if it is something to do with information. So, you know, writing a book, starting a YouTube channel, anything like that, you know, again, perfect energy to support you.
you know, and if you've been thinking about doing something, Mars is like, okay, right, well, what are you actually going to do about it? Let's go. You know, I'm, I'm bored of waiting. I don't want to wait. That is not, that is not my style. Let's just go. And of course, Jupiter, you know, in Gemini is really in helping us to increase our understanding of things, to raise our consciousness. It's affecting our belief systems, which may be changing again, you know, from minute to minute, again, with the speed of everything. Um, so there is potentially a lot being stirred up today. It's a very busy day mentally. There's going to be a lot of chatter in the mind, potentially. There's potentially lots of interesting news stories going to come out. You know, with Mars there, Mars and its lower expression as the god of war can create some anger, some aggression, some violence. So there may be information coming out that is making people feel quite worked up, um, quite antagon antagonized, quite, um, yeah, just quite angry and hacked off. You know, there is, you know, the, the, the pot is potentially being stirred with this energy. But again, it is about learning to navigate that and not being sucked in. So just sort of trusting that, yeah, things are being stirred up, big things are being whipped up. There's a lot of air, there's a lot of wind, you know, it can feel quite stormy, quite unstable. But it is about trusting that, you know, there is going to come a time when things will settle down and it is important to perhaps wait until that happens. Then you can survey the landscape, then you can sort of have a look around, see what's changed, what has been shifted by this um, air energy, this storm that, you know, potentially we are in. And, you know, and then how do we navigate the changes that have taken place without them affecting us too strongly while it's happening? Because, again, you know, things are just changing so quickly. So, um, you know, and if you get attached to one idea or one way of being, it's going to be quite stressful when suddenly all that gets flipped on its head, you know, in an instant. Now, there's some other things going on. So the moon is going to come into an opposition with this conjunction. The moon will reach 16 degrees of Sagittarius today. So with this opposition, you know, the moon is very much about our feelings. It's about our internal response to our world. It is also representative of the people. So, you know, it could be information um, coming through an expansion of consciousness, which is going to affect us at a collective level. But the Sagittarius moon requires us to to rise up, to move beyond the division, to move beyond taking sides, to see the bigger picture, to have the higher, greater consciousness and to not get really sort of bogged down in the nitty gritty and the details in the facts because, you know, there, there is this understanding that things are, you know, subject to change, um, at, you know, at, on a heartbeat. And... Um, and it's going to give us um, the ability to feel more intuitive, perhaps, and to have this higher perspective, which is going to be really, really valuable. Now, there are some galactic alignments that I will talk about briefly. But before I do, we also have um, with the, the Jupiter, Mars and Gemini opposing the moon in Sagittarius, we have a T-square with Saturn, which is at 17 degrees of Pisces. So Saturn in a T-square is, um, and this is a mutable T-square, this is very much, you know, Saturn often wants us to learn lessons. Saturn is kind of the father figure, the lord of karma. You know, there can be challenges, there can be limitations, there can be restrictions when Saturn is activated. Saturn may want to sort of push the um, pause button, you know, with Mars wanting to get going. Saturn might be saying, actually, hang on a minute. I'm not sure I'm ready. Have we thought about everything? Um so there can be restriction and limitation there. And Saturn might want to put in some rules or some regulations and some more structure. But Saturn in Pisces isn't in its strongest position. It's quite difficult for Saturn in Pisces to put in boundaries because when we're dealing with Pisces, there are no boundaries. Pisces is the sign of all that is. Pisces requires us to step out of the mundane sort of aspect of living in the 3D world and to really step into sort of a more unified um, existence that is at one with all that is, that is not interested in division, that is not interested in all the facts because everything is sort of, you know, merges together in this beautiful kind of um, 
nebulous, sort of ethereal, magical um, energy. And of course, you know, as it does so, it can create a lot of illusion and the feeling that, you know, things can feel quite surreal, um, quite, um, you know, confu confusion, absolutely. There can be real sort of misunderstandings as well through this T-square. So again, it is knowing that this is happening. You know, there is going to be a blurring of lines. There is going to be a blurring of facts and information, things changing constantly, people throwing in different points of view that perhaps, you know, you might think, oh yeah, you know, this is what I believe. And this is where I'm at. And then something, something comes in from left field and you just like, which blows everything you thought you knew way out of the water. So again, it is like holding that center space without getting too sort of carried away and sucked into the drama. It is about sort of acknowledging that things may be quite surreal and, you know, even fantastical at times. Um, but, you know, moving through, it is an, it's a transit. So it's just having that awareness that this is going on. Now, when we look at the galactic astrology, we've got two really um, sort of powerful influences in this T-square. First of all, I want to talk about the Great Attractor because the Great Attractor is at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. So the moon is going to meet with the Great Attractor shortly before it comes into this exact opposition with Jupiter and Mars. But because it's only a two degree orb, the Great Attractor is very much influencing Jupiter and Mars already. Now, the Great Attractor is one of the very powerful cosmic points that we work with in galactic astrology. It behaves in many ways like a black hole. So it has a really strong magnetic drawing and power to it. And ultimately, what it is doing is it is pulling us back to source energy, to um, this higher divine God consciousness, which it ultimately is to it's pulling us back to the truth of who we really are. And when we're working with black hole energy, you know, it's very mercurial in itself. You know, things are constantly changing. Things can flip overnight, you know, in a heartbeat. So again, you know, we've got this added influence. We're already working with this mutable um, T-square, but with the great attractor sort of in there as well, it's like there's even more potential for things to just be shifting and changing beyond recognition. So again, it's sort of being able to navigate that and trust that that is happening for the greatest good. Um, the great attractor brings in a much more multidimensional um, aspect as well to the energy. And again, because the moon is going to meet there, it's like, you know, giving us this higher perspective, this more divine perspective and outlook and way of looking at things and way of understanding um definitely pulling us much more towards unity so while there may be all this talk and all this chit chat and all this gossip sort of requiring us to take sides the great attractor is sort of pulling us out of that um reality and sort of into a higher um level of seeing things and, you know, this is about upgrades. This is about stretching our reality and our understanding. And, you know, with the great attractor, you know, there is a real sort of magnified um, psychic ability and spiritual way of seeing things. So again, the great attractor allows us to see behind the veil, behind the curtain, to see what has been hidden, because the great attractor is really only interested in the truth and nothing but the truth, which is the same for most of these cosmic points that we work with in galactic astrology. So, you know, where things are not clear or not authentic or are not coming from a place of integrity, um, then again, that is likely to be stripped away. And because we're working with mutable air um, and obviously in this case, mutable fire, you know, it is burning away anything that is not for our greatest good and the um, air is fanning those flames. So, you know... <laughs> It's yeah, there is definitely intensity there. But it is almost as if this cosmic point is allowing us to see things as they really are, um, to strip away all the illusion and all the confusion and to just show us the truth and to allow us to connect with the truth um 
which, you know, ultimately is really important and it's important for our evolution and for us to be able to move forward, to be able to see the bigger picture, to see the landscape for what it really is. And the other galactic or fixed star influence that we're working with is Regal in the Orion constellation. Now, Regal is at 17 degrees of Gemini. So Mars is going to meet Regal in exactitude um, very shortly. Jupiter will be there at the time of the full moon next week. And obviously Saturn is already in a square to Regal. Now, Regal in Orion, um, again, I've talked about this in previous videos. Orion is very much a star system that we associate with polarity and with division. Um, but when we are working with these fixed stars, you know, we have this sort of lower expression and this higher expression. So in its lower expression, Regal can often indicate um, sort of situations where we may have been subject to mind control or conditioning or programming or manipulation, particularly when it become, comes to our thoughts, our way of thinking and our understanding. Um, but Regal also is the foot of Orion the Hunter. So Regal is kind of the foot that is stepping out. So this is about giving us support to push through that confusion that perhaps we're having to navigate to um sort of yeah to basically step out in front so that you know we leave all the chitter chat the chaos the gossip the confusion the scattered um ness um of the reality have that behind us so that we can actually see perhaps where we might have been manipulated or controlled or you know encouraged to believe something that isn't actually true so, you know, where there are darker agendas, Regal is working with us to break through those. And certainly that is what is happening with this square to Saturn, which, you know, is going on for some time. So Regal also helps us to have this greater understanding, which is what the greater attractor is also helping us to do. And Regal helps us to sort of work with and work towards unity. So moving away from that separate, separate sort of um, understanding, you know, and this isn't just about um, separation between humanity. So the division, you know, all the sort of them and us, which again has been really noisy of late. Um, you know, in the media, in the political, in sort of, you know, in the social landscape. But it is also about separation internally from our higher selves and from the truth of who we are. So again, there is so much um, sort of coming together to not only help us to sort of you know, have a new understanding of who we are and how things lie and what is going on and what is the truth, but also helping us to connect more with our higher selves and to move out of that separation consciousness, which is ultimately where the deepest healing lies. Because when we're able to do that, that is ultimately us ascending to a higher level of consciousness and a higher way of seeing things and a deeper understanding of the truth of who we are. So, <laughs> it's like, taken slightly longer than I was planning to, but I just felt there was so much to say about this. So, um, yeah, it's a powerful day. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to do a full moon video because that is another like absolute doozy of, um, an event. And that is in five days time. So I will be working that on that later today. The moon is actually in my third house, which is ripe for me to sort of start sharing information and talking. So I do tend to work with the moon transits in my chart because um, I find that it just, yeah, it's very supportive. Um, but we also have um, Mercury is moving into Leo tomorrow. So there's going to be a shift and this is retrograde Mercury. So we're going to be more... Um, encouraged to sort of step into our heart centres, to perhaps step out of the mind. Obviously, you know, Mercury is the mind and it is in the mental sort of state, the mental landscape. But when we are working with Leo energy, this is much more about the heart centre and heart consciousness. So, um, you know, that is going to um, be really beneficial, perhaps, to help us navigate what is going on today. And then we also have the sun in a trine to Chiron tomorrow at 23 degrees of Leo and Aries, respectively. So, again, you know, this is really beautiful for helping us to heal 
anything that may be coming through right now and to um, really step into sort of a much stronger understanding of the self through Chiron in Aries, which is ultimately, again, a huge part of um, our evolution and our consciousness and our ascension. So, wow, that was a lot. You can really tell the strong Gemini energy. I hope you've been able to follow it and you found it useful. It just it just sometimes helps to kind of have an awareness of what is going on um, to help you put things into perspective. So thank you for watching. I'm Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. Website is spiralbright.co.uk and I will be back very soon with more insight. Thank you. <laughs>